Does your DIY project need an end-to-end -end connection? Well, stick around because that's what we're gonna cover in today's video. Let's get into it. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and if this is your first time here, we share weekly videos all about tips and tricks, build ideas, hacks, and other creative uses of ordinary materials all so you can finish your DIY projects. If you like seeing videos like that, then definitely consider subscribing. We appreciate it. Today, we're gonna to talk about a few different ways that you can connect two pieces of conduit end to end. Now, normally we don't recommend that you connect conduit in this way because long unsupported spans of pipe will cause issues in your build. That reason specifically is why we've never made a connector that solves this problem. But just in case your build needs an end to end connection for whatever reason, we don't wanna leave you out to dry. We're gonna go over a few different solutions, but just remember to do some testing Make sure it's the right thing for your specific project. A good rule of thumb that we like to recommend is for every five feet of conduit, add a brace of some sort. With that being said, let's go over the first solution. If you're familiar with our system of connectors, then you'll probably recognize the 180 degree connector. This allows you to connect two pieces of pipe at 180 degrees with a center support pipe that runs all the way through the connector. The center support pipe is necessary for the connector to work as it should, but what you can do is get one of these half inch plumbing pipe couplings from your local hardware store and put it in the center of the connector like this and then add your two outside pipes like normal. Once you tighten everything together, you have a strong end to end connection. And I wanna mention that we've seen people use stub pieces of conduit here, but when you cut down conduit that short, it tends to squish a little too much inside the connector. So that's why we recommend this coupler. On the side, you'll also find these threaded pipe inserts. Now we offer these in two different sizes, a quarter 20 or 3 8 16, but for end to end connections, you'll definitely want to use the larger 3 8 16 inserts. If you want more information on the tube inserts and the possibilities with them, you can check out a video that I'll link in the description. These hammer into the ends of conduit, or if your conduit is short enough, you can actually use a vise to put them in and it works really well. They're really easy to use to make an end to end connection. All you have to do is put an insert on each piece of conduit that you're trying to connect and then use a threaded rod in between them to connect them together. Once together, you have a nice end-to-end -end connection that should work pretty well, and in my opinion, looks really clean here. If you notice, my end-to-end -end connection is a little bit crooked, and that's because the pipes that I'm using weren't cut completely straight. So you wanna make sure to cut the pipe straight so when you put it all together, you have a nice straight end-to-end -end connection. You'll notice I have two different variants of the threaded inserts here. I've got the option with the lip and without the lip. For this basic end-to-end -end connection, I like to use the option with the lip, and this will offer decent pullout strength, but it's not gonna be that rigid in the middle here. It has the potential to flex pretty easily because the inner wall of the conduit isn't touching the threaded rod. If we use the threaded inserts without the lip, we can reinforce this and make it rigid in both directions. I wanna shout out Jay from Martin Product Design in Wisconsin for recommending this solution. All you're gonna need is a 3816 threaded rod. This one is three inches long, a couple of 3816 nuts, couple of 3816 inserts without the lip, and then a couple of different size washers. I'll be sure to link everything down below so you can recreate this. To put it together, it's really simple. All you have to do is thread one of the nuts about a quarter of the way up the threaded rod, and then we're gonna add five of these smaller diameter washers on top of the nut. Then you're gonna need a couple of these larger diameter washers. You're gonna put those on top of the small ones, Then we're gonna put five more small washers on top and then we're gonna add another nut on there. And you might have to adjust to make sure that the thread sticking out on both sides are even, but once you get it all together, it should have something that looks pretty close to this. Once you thread the two pipes on, you'll have a strong end-to-end -end connection. You have the rigidity for the flexing here in the middle, and you also have good pull-out strength as well. For this reinforcement solution to work as it should, you wanna make sure the conduit is totally deburred. You can use the deburring tool on the pipe and tube cutter if you have to, but for the best results, you wanna use a bandsaw or something like that that's gonna make sure that that cut is really flush. Next up is a solution that utilizes some off-the-shelf components. You can find two different types of couplings at your local hardware store that allow you to connect two pieces of conduit end to end. You have these set screw couplings which allow you to put two pieces of conduit in and they sit flush against this little inner wall here in the middle that you can't see. And then you just tighten down these two set screws. You can actually reinforce this method if you want to by removing the set screws and then getting some metal self-tapping screws to replace them. You can also use the compression fittings off the shelf that work similarly where you take two pieces of conduit, insert them in until they're hitting the inner wall, and then you just tighten these nuts here until you get a strong connection and make sure everything is secure. On their own, these two couplings will offer pretty decent pull-out strength, but if we combine them with a method from earlier, we can make an even stronger connection. You'll notice that the two couplings are hollow all the way through, which means if we add a threaded rod through them, it's not gonna hit anything or cause any issues. So I've got two no-lip inserts, one in each piece of conduit that I'm connecting, 
I'm gonna add a threaded rod to one side and then slide the coupling over top and then thread on my other piece of conduit. You'll thread them all the way until it's super tight. You can do a pull out test there and then you can screw down your set screws or add your self tapping screw. And this is gonna offer a really strong end to end connection. You can also do it with the compression fitting because this is hollow as well but I think this method will be stronger just because you're gonna have those set screws or self-tapping screws that are gonna bite down into the conduit. While I was at the hardware store, I stumbled across these three quarter inch insert couplings. I'm not a huge fan of this option because you have to hammer them into conduit. And if you're dealing with longer pieces of pipe, I think it'll be pretty frustrating, but I still wanted to let you know that they exist in case you wanna try them out in your project. The last solution that I wanna recommend involves this metal stake. I normally recommend these for outdoor projects that need to be secured to the ground, because they work really well for that. You can also use them here as an end-to-end -end reinforcement because you can slide two pieces of conduit over like so, and you'll have a good end-to-end -end reinforcement, like I said, but you're still gonna have to connect them somehow in the middle. It just so happens that the set screw couplers will also fit over the stake, and then you can secure everything together and have a good, strong, rigid, reinforced end-to-end -end connection. This does add quite a bit of weight to your project, so keep that in mind when building. I also wanna mention that, of course, this is still gonna be loose inside, so you might wanna add some tape or something on the inside to shim it a little bit if you need this inside stake to stay in place. If you found this video helpful, we'd appreciate if you left a like, and if you need more helpful tips and tricks, check out this video here. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.